So now that we have covered the pulmonary circulation, let us now cover the other side of the coin, looking at our systemic circulation. We are now going to be focusing on the left hand side of the heart here. What has happened? In our previous video, we looked at the blood moving to the right and left lung and becoming oxygenated. From there, the blood will then move back to the heart and will then move into our left atria. So from our left atria, the atria is then going to constrict and push blood from that left atria down into the left ventricle. The left ventricle is then going to constrict and it's going to push blood from the left ventricle up through that aortic semilunar valve and out to the aorta. So what is happening here is that this is the, both the pulmonary and systemic circulation are both happening at the same time. So this is why when the atria constrict, it's pushing blood into the ventricles. Now it's doing this at both sides at the same time. From our left atria, the atria constricts, pushes blood from the atria through our bicuspid valve or mitral valve into our left ventricle. The left ventricle will then constrict and push blood from the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve up the aorta across our aortic arch and then down to the rest of the body. So that is our pulmonary and systemic circulation. Now, what we can also see in this diagram here is the sheer size difference of our left ventricle compared to the right ventricle. So why would one side of the, of, of the heart be so much bigger, have so much more muscle when compared to the other side? The answer is we need to keep in mind how far we need to deliver this blood. With our right side here, it's only delivering blood to the lungs, which is relatively close. The left hand side, however, it has to deliver blood to the, re the rest of the body. It's got a much, much further path to travel. So it needs to constrict and push that blood a lot harder to make sure it moves around the body. 